beautiful astrology soulmates and welcome to your weekly horoscope for the week of November 9th where this week not only does Mars come out of retrograde we've got the third of the Jupiter Pluto conjunctions for the year we're also going to have a new moon that we welcome in just here on the 14th in the energy of Scorpio so it's a little bit of an energetically busy week and I'm really kind of excited to talk about what's going on because it's it's like a mixed bag this week it's all in this direction I think that is pulling the energies forward We've had a lot of intensity. Mercury's been in Scorpio and will be back in Scorpio this week. So that has also brought a lot of conversational intensity and like laser beam focus to what we've been talking about, thinking about, probing about. So some of that energy, I think, gets to shut down just a little bit this week so that we can kind of make our way forward, ask these last questions, go over details that we need to. But ultimately, it is a really nice deal knowing that Mars, our motivation planet, is also coming back online. So I think it's going to be an interesting interesting, usable, but ultimately it's available to be a very good week depending on what you do with it, okay? Now this week, the eat and greets, there are three of them this week, and we are starting off Tuesday morning at 7.30 a.m. Mountain Time on this channel with Sonal coming over to talk about Vedic astrology. Then later in the week on the 12th month, Vanessa Montgomery will be here to talk about sun sign astrology, which I can't wait to share that because I'm a really big fan of sun sign astrology as well. And at the end of the week, we're actually going to take a look at Mars with Julian Venables. He'll be here to talk about the many different faces of Mars and how we study it throughout the history through the different contexts that we see Mars in it's not always just this aggressive god of war so you know what I mean we're going to get to take a different look at what Mars can bring into our lives and how we may cultivate that right on the heels of Mars coming out of retrograde so I think it's going to be a beautiful week in the eat and greets I can't wait to see you there and remember you can always catch the eat and greets ad free over on Patreon all of that is in the description box down below all right, let's jump in here and talk about what's going on this week. So right as we come in at the beginning of the week, I actually love the energy we're coming in, not just because Venus is involved, <laughs> but also because I think we need a little bit of the Neptunian vibe that becomes available. So right on the ninth, we see Venus in an opposition with Mars. So Venus is over in the energy of Libra. Mars is, of course, still retrograde in the energy of Aries. Now, they are doing this opposing energy at 15 degrees. And even though they are opposing, these are the lovers of the zodiac. So it's almost as if in this particular configuration, Venus is facing forward in Libra saying, we, 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 we. Mars is facing backwards, looking in on Aries, the me, 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 me. And so it's kind of this very charming sexy energy where it's like well where do i need to explore the action of me to actually bring harmony to the we because remember an opposition tends to be relational and really the only thing an opposition wants from us is to integrate both sides so we're looking for the compromise in the middle what's the middle of the me and the we for you this week venus and mars together as they do this dance even in opposition has the opportunity to bring something just really beautiful to the surface but what i'll tell you is that opportunities, relationships, ideas, as you're looking at the dynamics between the me and the we, think about it. What do you really desire from that particular relationship, partnership, interaction going forward? Answer that question and I think that will help you pick apart that opposition and make the choices that are best for you. What do you really desire? What do you want? What are you trying to get out of this? Mars is an energy of a desire flipped backwards. He's trying to show you that maybe your desire is a little different than what you've been working with. He's almost at the end of his retrograde. So really listen because he's shown it to you a couple times and then Venus will happily bring that harmony in, okay at the same time we've got the sun in a trine to neptune who is also retrograde so sun over here in the energy of scorpio and then we've got neptune of course over here in the energy of pisces so this is going to be at 18 degrees so make sure you grab your charts and you see where this 18 degree trine is happening for you now sun trine neptune this is a pocket of ease or opportunity that we can move easily in and through so the sun is motivated it wants to be seen it wants to be shining it wants to be the brightest thing in your life this is where the heat of your motivation is at. And Neptune, especially retrograde, is over your ideals. You're looking back over the big shine, right? What's the big shine of your ideals? Um, where are you at in forgiveness this week? You've got this me-we balance earlier in the day, and then you've got this balance of the sun trying Neptune later. So where are you at in forgiveness? Where are you at in maybe helping somebody? And that's how you find that compromise of that opposition because you're like, well, 
I'm not in the same position you are, so maybe you're suffering, maybe you're hurting, maybe you could use some help and I can just reach out to help you. That would be a brilliant way to consider that me we balance. But I also feel like Sun trying Neptune. Neptune's looking backwards. Where did you even, in, in and of yourself, live, work, say things, do things in a way that aligned with who you were then, but they maybe don't fit your ideals anymore. Your ideals for who you are, what you are, are changing. Sun is probing over there in the energy of Scorpio. So it's okay to be motivated towards your own empowerment, your own passion, your own desire, your own fulfillment, and your own transformation. And you can look back over those ideals to see if they're in alignment now. So I really love to start that that with the week with that energy, my goodness. Now, as we move forward and we get to the 10th, we're gonna see that Mercury is gonna now move back into the energy of Scorpio. Mercury was in the energy of Scorpio at 12 degrees where it took that retrograde. Then it took the retrograde, moved all the way back into the energy of Libra last week where it came out of retrograde at 26 degrees of Libra. And now it's gonna come forward here on the 10th back into the energy of Scorpio. So right at zero degrees. Now this is a long time. I mean, really between September and November, we've been doing this Mercury Scorpio energetic kind of dance. So this has been a long time of our thinking, our minds, um, our words being probing. Mercury is getting into the details. We have been probing. We've been looking for details. Maybe we've even had some jealous, possessive, scandalous kinds of thoughts. You know, and we have to get down into the deep and murky. Scorpio is here to take you to the guts, into the meat of what's really living within you, what's really living in the information. Because remember, Scorpio does like Mercury being there, right? Mercury wants the details and Scorpio wants to take things apart and see what's inside. What's the details of what's living down here? So whatever you've been probing about and wherever the zero degrees of Scorpio lines up on your chart, see what Mercury is showing you. See what questions he's asking you and bringing to the surface or has you very intensely focused in on. This is going to be something that if you can answer that question looking at your chart, it may help you see a vibe of what Mercury was already trying to help you look at. And now as he's back here at zero degrees of Scorpio, you can start to answer those questions and begin to slowly move things forward. But I really think between zero degrees and 12 degrees, that's the path that Mercury was in when it was taking its retrograde. I think as we're doing this zero to 12 degrees, you're still doing a lot of research on something in this particular area in your chart, or you're still asking a lot of questions. Now, as we get past that 12 degrees of Mercury and Scorpio, then you know that you've really got Mercury's like full support for forward motion. And even better, I think that once Mercury gets into the energy of Sagittarius when we're in December, then you have an even more abundant energy to make things happen, close the deal, make a big decision, make that long range plan, something like that. But either way, just know that Mercury is now on the 10th back in the energy of Scorpio. As we get to the 12th, we've got the third and final Jupiter-Pluto conjunction, and they're coming together both out of retrograde. Now, we've seen it three different times. So we saw it in April where Jupiter and Pluto came together. They were both direct. In June, they came together. They were both retrograde, and now they're coming together direct again to close out this cycle for this year. Now, as Jupiter and Pluto come together, it is really desire and drive meets fortune, Jupiter, and that equals success on the other side. You are driven, you are moving, you are passionate to push something forward. You want to expand something out there. You want to, in this 13 year cycle of these particular energies, you you don't want to compromise anymore. You want to push your thing forward. Now I'll ask you, go back to April. What was that thing? What was abundant? What was big? What came up for you? What did you feel like? I really got to get this area going. I really maybe even want to make some profit from this area or change and grow in a way that's um, spiritual in this area that again leads me to some expansion because you would have reviewed it again in June and now it's coming to this culmination here. And I think one of the things that happens is you're able to see the pathway to success with these particular energies or you're able to very clearly see, especially with Mercury in Scorpio, what is in your way and causing like um almost like a stumbling block, okay? But large scale achievements is really what these particular energies bring in. So go back over these particular areas in your chart and see, and it's in the Capricorn energy at 23 degrees. So go back and see what areas were you working on and where is it continuing to advance right now? Now, as we're getting ready to close out this week, we get to the 13th and Mars is coming out of retrograde. Thank you. 
very much. Good job, Mars. You did it. Right now, Mars is coming out of retrograde at 15 degrees of Aries, and hopefully you've used this time absolutely beautifully, wonderfully to plan, to re-strategize, to re-look at your desires in the Aries areas of your chart. And remember that idea was that as Mars is retrograding, we're redoing the strategy. As Mars comes out of retrograde, are you going to come out assertively and really have this plan and have some agency for yourself and your plans and your ideas and move that area forward you're going to come out aggressively and it's just going to be chaos and it's going to be really painful for those involved right so what's your movement of your mars energy coming forward what did you discover that you want and you desire to be like burns your fire like gets you hot in your good places and makes you move makes that creativity move who did you find out that you were because now it's time to start being that person as mars is out of retrograde so this is also a good energy for me to remind you that even though mars is out of retrograde he needs just a little bit to pick up that speed pick up that orbit and really get going but the fact that he's gonna release is really good for all of us now we may see truly globally as mars comes out of retrograde some people being more at that aggressive end instead of the assertive side so out there in the world i will tell you remember you can only control what is in this bubble in these fingertips and that is you you cannot control what everybody else is doing but make sure that you are you've got a strategy in place to um make sure you are safe seen and protected as well it is still mars okay now as we like close the week on the 14th we've got this new moon happening in the energy of scorpio at 23 degrees at this particular moon the sun is also sextile to pluto it's also sextile to jupiter who've just recently had their conjunction just a couple days later so this moon is absolutely eating up that energy besides just being this beautiful new moon that is happening it is also eating up that jupiter pluto help that was just coming just a couple days before. Now at the new moon, we plant our seeds of intention, right? Plant it to begin something new, get a fresh perspective, fresh eyes on something. You know, in your chart, where does 23 degrees of Scorpio sit? What are you willing to see with fresh eyes over the next four weeks? What are you willing to take this really fantastic sextile between the sun, your motivation and Jupiter and move forward? What are you willing to expand into? What are you willing to believe differently? What are you willing to let Pluto give you new ideas and new concepts that dominate your thinking and your belief in your heart system, right? That's a really big energy in the world at this time, I think in general. Now, the other thing that I'm thinking about, I'm just looking at um, the alignments we've got here too because Saturn is loosely going to be involved in this Saturn will be here at 27 degrees so I think that too because Jupiter and Pluto have just recently had their conjunction anything that you start at this new moon and that is for good or for ill but truly any new ventures or new things that you take on and initiate right here at this particular moon especially if it's something from your past if you had seen it maybe at that full moon that happened on halloween in taurus what was happening for you there what was going on for you there if you're beginning something based off of that i actually think that that saturn energy brings in a beautiful grounding of of long-term stability and success available at this particular new moon now i will tell you uranus is still retrograde at this moon um, mercury has only just come back into the energy of scorpio but like i said it's not back at that 12 degrees yet mars has just come out of retrograde he is certainly not back in the path of where he was at to forward move so there's a lot of energy that hangs here on you've already done the project that jupiter pluto you've already done the project you've already had the idea the revelation has come to you start it now at this new moon and then let this four weeks six weeks kind of catch it and uh, i think you've got something good in long term on your hands okay all right, my beautiful friends, thank you so much for being patient. I apologize this video was up a little bit later. My dad was very sick this weekend, so we ended up having to take him to the hospital. And sometimes you have to just not make a video and be with the family. So I'm sending you lots and lots of love out there. I appreciate you. I love you. I look forward to seeing you this week and in all of the weeks to come. Bye, everyone.